transition period to recognize the leader of the opposition. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This tired and out of touch government is failing to offer any cost of living relief to Saskatchewan families who are struggling to pay their bills. And the latest food bank numbers, Mr. Speaker, show the urgency. In the past year alone, food bank usage in this province is up 24 per cent. And since 2019, under that Premier's watch, it is up a whopping 50 per cent. The question, when will the Premier accept any responsibility for the cost of living crisis that he and his government has created? Recognize the Premier. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And I, I do thank the member opposite for the question. As we I talk about affordability uh, in, in this province, Mr. Speaker, and across the nation, affordability most certainly is a challenge for uh, families. Uh, Mr. Speaker, yes, a challenge for for businesses, for municipalities, for even the provincial government, but most importantly, I think, and most uh, uh, succinctly, that what we should be uh, focused on, Mr. Speaker, on the floor of this assembly, is ensuring that uh, Saskatchewan is one of the most affordable places to live, uh, not only in Canada, Mr. Speaker, but affordable uh, among our, our, our global competitors, Mr. Speaker, in, in attracting people uh, here, while also being a safe place, Mr. Speaker, our safe uh, communities with the services that that people uh, ultimately expect to be available, Mr. Speaker, is, which is the balance that we uh, tend to each and every day, providing health care services, providing highways, Mr. Speaker, investment in our highways, providing uh, schools, Mr. Speaker, 60 new schools. 60 new schools be built over the course of the last uh, 15 years, Mr. Speaker, each and every year while providing $2 billion in affordability measures in each and every budget, Mr. Speaker, added to and committed to in the most recent speech from the throne with um, affordability measures for those that want to own a home, Mr. Speaker, with a, a reduction in the PST, uh, 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 Mr. Speaker, a grant when it comes to... Secondary to a secondary suite program, Mr. Speaker, um, as well as a Saskatchewan Employment Incentive Program. And I would say the largest affordability measure that we uh, would be able to see over the course of the last while would be an extension of the, of the federal government's, uh, Mr. Speaker, carbon tax uh, abatement uh, that is today focused primarily in Atlantic Canada to extend that to all home he heating sources, Mr. Speaker, including natural gas, which is predominantly used in Saskatchewan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Recognize the Leader of the Opposition. Well, Mr. Speaker, it's extraordinary, but we found um, some agreement between the two sides of the House. Clearly, clearly what the federal government is doing isn't fair. Right. It's not fair to allow the exemption in some parts of Canada, but not extend that to the West. In fact, Mr. Speaker, I'd say it's ex extraordinarily unfair, and directing Sask Energy to not collect the federal carbon tax is an extraordinary but justified measure if a deal to restore fairness can't be found. Right. But Mr. Speaker, it's clear that the people of this province can't wait until January 1st for relief. Right. They need relief today. Right. So when will the Premier roll back some of the measures that he's imposed on Saskatchewan people to offer that relief today? Yeah. Recognize the Premier. Mr. Speaker, uh, earlier this year, uh, Sask Energy, I did provide uh, an 8 percent reduction in our Sask Energy bills to families across, uh, across the province, Mr. Speaker, uh, ensuring and, and continuing uh, the, the fact that Saskatchewan has the second lowest utility bundle as a whole of, of any province in the nation of Canada, Mr. Speaker, when ranked uh, as affordable cities to live in, Saskatoon and Regina were first in tent uh, with respect to being uh, the most affordable, some of the most affordable places to call home in the nation of Canada, Mr. Speaker. When it comes to the the federal government's uh, um, unfair, uh, unfair policy uh, favoring uh, families in, in Atlantic Canada, Mr. Speaker, are not uh, by any stretch favoring families with a, a policy that I would say that a carbon tax policy that we have always said is the wrong policy, Mr. Speaker, but at least in years gone by was enacted fairly. Uh, today it's still the wrong policy. Uh, it isn't being enacted fairly today, Mr. Speaker, and so we would say three things with respect to that. First, still our belief that the federal government should scrap the carbon tax for everyone on everything, Mr. Speaker, that's priority number one. Second is they should extend their pause uh, to all forms of heating, Mr. Speaker, um, and if not, Sask Energy is going to uh, quit collecting the federal carbon tax come January the 1st. Recognize the Leader of the Opposition. 
Mr. Speaker, I'm not sure if, he, if the Premier heard the question, but there's agreement there. And there are things that this government could and should be doing today to offer that, that relief. But, Mr. Speaker, clearly, people across this province, across the country, are tired of divisive political games. They're tired of the federal government sowing division between East and West, for sure. And they're tired of this provincial government that recalled this very legislature for nothing other than to sow division here in this province. It's shameful politics, Mr. Speaker, on all fronts. So what is that Premier's plan to make sure that the voices of Saskatchewan people are heard? And what is his plan to get a deal that offers the same relief to people here in Saskatchewan? Recognize the Premier. Well, I'm pretty sure the peoples of people of this province, their voice is being heard and heard well today, Mr. Speaker, uh, with respect to uh, ensuring that federal government, propped up by the NDP, Mr. Speaker, the federal government is fully aware that we believe that this carbon tax scheme that they have enacted, of which we have never agreed with, Mr. Speaker, is removed for, from every, for everyone on everything. That's priority one. Remove this carbon tax scheme, Mr. Speaker, this Trudeau carbon tax scheme that is supported by the NDP. Right. Mr. Speaker, right. if there was ever a reason, if there was ever a reason to write your federal leader and say, remove our party from this confidence and supply agreement that you have signed, Mr. Right. Speaker, today is that day. Will the leader of the opposition do that? Yeah. Recognize the leader of the opposition. Well, Mr. Speaker, he didn't ask for advice, but here's some advice for him. Something I find more effective than tweeting, more effective than standing up in this legislature is to actually have a plan. You know what? Earlier today, I called the federal leader and I expressed very clearly the concerns of this province. Here, here, here. My understanding is they share our same concerns, but when he's hopefully talking to all the federal leaders, he will reiterate that and clarify that. Yep. My question again, what is the Premier's plan, other than tweets, other than standing up in this legislature, here, here. to actually get a deal to provide that relief to Saskatchewan people? Recognize the Premier. Speaker, our plan is to ensure that there is fairness for families across this nation. Mr. Speaker, our plan is to ensure that come January 1st, Sask Energy bills at today are 40% of that bill is a federal carbon tax supported by the NDP, Mr. Speaker, an NDP right here in this house that called our our carbon tax lawsuit frivolous, Mr. Speaker. Right. Remember that? A lawsuit. A lawsuit, Mr. Speaker, that was there to ensure and to battle for fairness for Saskatchewan families. Now what we see through an NDP support of a Liberal government, Mr. Speaker, not only do we have the wrong policy enacted across this nation, which was enacted fairly across the nation, now we have the wrong policy that is not enacted fairly across this nation, Mr. Speaker. That's what the confidence and supply agreement that Jagmeet Singh offered the Liberals has, has achieved in this nation, Mr. Right. Speaker. One of the most divisive federal governments that this, this nation has ever seen, Mr. Speaker. Right. What we are going to do is continue to offer $2 billion in affordability measures for Saskatchewan people. What we are going to do, Mr. Speaker, is to ensure that we fight for families living, living in the city of Regina, the city of Saskatoon, wherever they live, Mr. Speaker, in fight, in, ensure that we are fighting for fairness for those Saskatchewan families. Yeah. Yeah.